Friends Till the End, Chapter One. Under the warm Italian sun, the four friends cruised through the narrow streets of Florence in a sleek black Lamborghini SUV. The car's purr echoed off the ancient stone buildings, a symphony of opulence in a city steeped in history. Lorenzo, the charismatic leader of the group, lounged in the driver's seat, his chiseled jawline framed by designer sunglasses. Beside him sat Isabella, her raven hair flowing like silk, her laughter a sultry melody. Where to next, Lorenzo? Isabella asked, her voice dripping with anticipation. Lorenzo flashed a confident smile, revealing perfect teeth. To the vineyard, of course. Let's indulge in some fine local wine. Their journey had begun as a lavish adventure, a whirlwind tour of Italy's most exquisite locales. Luca, the brooding artist with a penchant for mischief, occupied the back seat, sketching the picturesque landscapes that swept by in a blur. Chiara, the enchanting violinist, played a haunting melody, filling the car with a sense of longing. Innocence was but a veneer for these young aristocrats, for their decadence was matched only by their ruthlessness. Their bonds ran deep, forged by secrets and the thrill of power. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting an amber glow across the Tuscan countryside. A sinister undercurrent pulsed beneath their laughter. Chapter Two. The sprawling vineyard was a testament to wealth and privilege. Rows of grapevines bathed in the glow of the setting sun. The friends lounged on plush chairs, sipping ruby red wine from crystal glasses. The conversation flowed as smoothly as the wine. A facade of camaraderie that masked their true intentions. As darkness settled in, the group retired to their lavish villa. Lorenzo, the master of ceremonies, proposed a toast. To us, the masters of our fate, he declared, a sly gleam in his eye. But fate had other plans. The night air turned chilly, and a sinister atmosphere descended upon the villa. As the clock struck midnight, a scream pierced the silence, shattering the illusion of camaraderie. The friends rushed to the source of the sound, finding Kiara's lifeless body sprawled on the marble floor. Her violin lay shattered beside her. The haunting melody silenced forever. Panic and shock gripped the group. Luca's eyes darted around the room. Who could have done this? He whispered, his voice trembling. Isabella's gaze bore into Lorenzo's. Lorenzo, you were the last one with her. What happened? Lorenzo's face contorted into a mask of confusion and sorrow. I don't know, Isabella. I left her here to fetch a bottle of wine, and when I returned, she was like this. As the police arrived. The friends found themselves ensnared in a web of suspicion. Each questioned, each scrutinized. The darkness of their secrets was closing in. Chapter three. Days passed, and the investigation yielded no answers. The friends, gripped by paranoia and fear, found their bonds fraying. Accusations flew like poisoned darts, and trust became an elusive shadow. Isabella, elegant as ever, cornered Luca in a dimly lit corridor. Luca, do you know something? She whispered urgently. His eyes were dark with guilt. I, I saw Lorenzo near Chiara's room that night, but I didn't want to believe it. What if he did it? Isabella's heart pounded. Lorenzo, the charismatic leader, the man who held their fragile alliance together, a murderer. It was unthinkable. Meanwhile, Lorenzo had his own suspicions. He cornered Isabella in the garden, his voice low and dangerous. Isabella, 
I think it's Luca. He's been acting strangely since that night, and he had a motive. Isabella's mind raced. Accusations and distrust had become their constant companions. She needed to find the truth to protect herself from the encroaching darkness. Chapter Four. One evening, as a storm raged outside, Isabella gathered the group in the villa's opulent library. Lighting illuminated the room in brief, haunting flashes. We must get to the bottom of this," she declared, her voice echoing with authority. The friends exchanged wary glances. "How?" asked Lorenzo, a hint of desperation in his voice. Isabella took a deep breath. "We must confront our secrets. Each of us will reveal one or two truths about ourselves, something none of us know. Only then can we trust each other again." Tension simmered as the group took turns confessing their darkest secrets. Luca had sabotaged a rival artist. Lorenzo had embezzled from his family's business. Isabella had manipulated a former lover into bankruptcy. The revelations hung in the air like a storm cloud. As the second confession came from Lorenzo, the room fell into an eerie silence. I've been having an affair with Chiara," he admitted, his voice heavy with guilt. "But I loved her. I didn't kill her." The truth had been laid bare, yet it only deepened the mystery. Chiara's murder remained unsolved, and the group's trust was shattered beyond repair. Chapter Five. A month passed, and the group's descent into madness continued. Isabella, unable to bear the uncertainty any longer, embarked on her own investigation. She delved into Chiara's life, searching for any clue that might lead to the truth. One evening, as she combed through Chiara's belongings, she discovered a hidden compartment in the violin case. Inside, she found a letter written in Chiara's elegant handwriting. The letter revealed a shocking truth. Chiara had uncovered the group's dark secrets, including Lorenzo's embezzlement, Luca's sabotage, and Isabella's manipulation. She had threatened to expose them all, leading to her own demise. Isabella's heart raced as she realized the horrifying truth. Chiara had been killed to protect their secrets, and the killer was among them. But who? And now it's time for you to decide how the story ends. Who killed Kiara? Write the ending in the comments. How does the story end? I can't wait to read your end to the story. 